let's quickly touch upon the Diddy and Cassie stuff again. And mostly just wanted to speak about it because I think this has been a little bit of an educational moment or a, an eye-opening moment for me in terms of how I navigate in my little scene of dance music and stuff, right? Because that's really the only place I'm out and about meeting other people and whatnot. Because most time, for the most part, I usually keep to myself to myself. But when I'm out and about in these clubs and stuff, I've always had this really weird, fanciful idea that clubs, you know, they're not really safe spaces, but if anything, they're our attempt at creating a quasi or faux utopia, right? It's sort of like our, um, you know, our view on what society should look like in that brief kind of time period, right? Where we all get along. We don't talk about politics. We're just here for a good time. We're just here for a, a good time, not a long time, all that good shit, right? But one thing I think has really been unfortunate that I've seen happen in the last few years is that there's been a lot of that kind of like, um, I wouldn't even call it bro culture, but there's a lot of that hookup culture thing has become a little bit more pressed, has become too much in the forefront. So similar to the drugs and booze. I feel like the drugs and booze thing has become way more of a priority for people when they go out, as opposed to the music, meeting new people, having a dance, letting yourself go a bit, you know what I mean, from the hardness of your week and maybe the rigidity of your life, of your, of your life at home or whatever it may be, maybe able to go out once a month, once whenever you go out and just kind of let go is really important for all humans to do. doesn't matter if you do it in a club, doesn't matter if your, your release is going to a park, is going to, a, is, you know, going to do the fucking weekly shopping. You need a release. And I think clubs serve as that release. But I think with the, with people prioritizing hookups and fucking and shit and drinking and doing drugs in clubs more so than the music, there's been a lot of blurring of the lines, right? People just basically being a little bit too comfortable when it comes to the females with the women in these spaces and really making it not the most comfortable spaces for them to go to, which really does explain, especially in London, why loads of girls prefer to go to gay nights because they feel way more comfortable there. They feel um, less like they have to be, you know, on attention all the time and they can really enjoy themselves wear what they want do what they want without the threat of some guy trying to come up behind them grind on them touch them talk to them all this sort of nonsense so i think this diddy and cassie thing for me was a reminder on what is important and the important thing is to look after one another to really look after one another and call out the fuck shit. No matter who it is, no matter what they do, no matter their station, no matter their money, no matter anything, you have to call it out because the only way these things, these kind of predators and these abusers can stop or the only way we can kind of limit, um, you know, the amount of victims or their damage that they do to people is if we call this shit out. Regular people, you and I, regular civilians, hunters customers ravers whatever it may be whatever industry whatever niche whatever subculture that we're involved in you have to call out the fuck shit because if you don't call out the fuck shit people will go getting no people will get abused people will get taken advantage of behind the scenes you know until the end of time because people aren't willing to step up and you have to also keep in mind with this cassie and, and diddy thing cassie is quite high profile too that's probably one of the reasons why it got the amount of coverage that it did and why it was such a slam dunk case because she's quite high profile because she was close to Diddy for a number of years right nobody can deny that she was you know a close confidant of his and they spent a lot of personal time together so whatever account or whatever experience that she has um of the time that they had together you would be remiss to say that she was lying because she was there we saw her with him all the time you know he spoke about it all the time they spoke about each other all the time so clearly there's a lot of weight in it and plus she's a bit of a legend in her own right when it comes to the music and when it comes to just being a face and whatever it may be so i think it's honestly important it really really important for people like myself included to really put that at the forefront and i'm also going into the new year with my raving mindset or my new kind of outlook on why i'm trying to approach things i'm on a fun vibe i'm on just a kind of you know dance i'm on to let free because again i'm not really going out as often as i was before maybe once a month maybe twice but when i am going out it's phone in pocket vibes no scrolling on the social media no fucking loitering around the edges going right in the middle dancing my fucking face off having a good time helping and you know supporting everybody around me if somebody looks like they're about to go a bit crazy or loopy whatever helping them out with some water making sure everybody's okay if i've got a spare 
you know, giving somebody something here, enjoy yourself, have a good time, be responsible, and just looking after people around you without any any idea of any intention or any kind of um, entitlement. Oh, I want to hook up with somebody. Obviously, that's not me anyway. I'm married. I've got children and shit. I'm not going to be in that vibe. But still, this idea of going to these sort of places with the intention of seeking somebody to go and attack is not on personally i i don't think so and i think even when i wasn't married right what i did when i did go out and i had occasions where i did happen to fucking get lucky on a dance floor for the most part it happens to you you don't have to go looking for it if somebody sees you and they like the 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 fucking cut of your fade they like how your chin sits they like how your eyes are or your the way your hands move most likely they'll come up to you anyway so you don't need to go out there hunting like a fucking you know like a like a man out there in a safari or something no you need to just chill enjoy yourself have your drink and relax and you see someone doing some crazy shit some creepy shit you have to call that shit out because look at this story the latest update here right that i've seen regarding cassie and diddy diddy reportedly pressured cassie to get breast implants then demanded she remove them the next day despite health risks because they were too big can you imagine the level of control the level of manipulation this guy had on this young lady. Absolutely wild. And you guys all start to think, I said before, imagine how unlucky Cassie is to come into the industry and the first prominent person that she meets, her first long-time collaborator, the person that basically makes her career, is fucking Diddy. Of all the people she could have bumped into, she had to bump into fucking Diddy. Fucking hell, man. So there's a lot of good that came from it, but the fucking negatives probably outweigh the positive probably if you think about it because she hasn't she hasn't released any music since maybe that's the reason why she hasn't put any music the music industry has been so tainted because of her time in it that she wants absolutely nothing to do with that previous life like i said this there's, there's something quite interesting about how quickly she stepped away from the scene she her and diddy broke up and you haven't seen her in a hip-hop space ever again even her husband is fucking white do you know I mean? She completely went the opposite way. Like, I don't want anything to do with that scene. Get fucked. So I wonder if that's to do with the treatment that she kind of endured from Diddy. So again, she had a she had a decent enough career, but then now she's probably been scarred for life when it comes to music and doesn't want anything to do with it because every time she probably thinks about music, she thinks about fucking Diddy. Um, it's, the article says, Diddy and Cassie may have agreed on a settlement to prevent more details of their alleged abuse from becoming public. But now that Cassie's truth is out there, more people are stepping forward to come uh, to back up her claims and more. A witness who was around when Cassie got a breast augmentation back in 2009 has come forward to reveal the level of control that Diddy had when it came to Cassie's body. According to the source, Diddy was unhappy with the breast augmentation he pressured Cassie into getting and demanded the celebrity plastic surgeon dr frank ryan removed just one remove it just one day after one day after and again i don't know much about breast implants or augmentation but i would imagine you just can't remove them the day after there's a lot of aftercare that goes into making sure those things sit right and whatnot I've, I'm, I'm sure of it the quote courtesy of the daily mail speaking exclusively to the daily mail did he thought that he could go back right into surgery like now and take them out and dr ryan was like no way trying to explain it to him that he would have to wait at least six months to see how it heals because she was just opened up. But Diddy was like, no, they've got to come out. Call you who you need to call. They've got to come out. The witness who spoke on the condition of anonymity said the discussion took place shortly after Thanksgiving 2009 at the office of Dr. Ryan, who died the following year in August 2010 when he accidentally dove off a cliff in Malibu while sending a text. <laughs> Fucking hell. This plastic surgeon died by accident because he drove off a cliff. That's he must have he must have self-expired, isn't it? How can you accidentally drive off a cliff? Fucking hell. Inside source um said she did not speak at the time to avoid causing problems. And I also understand the detail that they have on these allegations around Diddy and Cassie makes you, you know, it leads you to believe that most likely everything they say about him is true. Because nobody so far has come out and refuted the claims. Nobody has close to Diddy has said, no, actually, these claims are, um, uh, you know, they're not, substanti they're not substantiated. This, this guy was a good guy. He did nothing bad to me, blah, 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 blah. Nobody has come out to back him up, right? And you would think for the amount of people that he's intimidated, the amount of people he's helped over the years, there'd be at least one person willing to go on record and say, nah, Diddy's a good guy. 
no one of any re repute anywhere of any kind of worth you know, you know there's obviously the slim thugs of rich dollars and all those kind of donkeys um have come out and disputed cassie's claims but that's more so on the kind of alpha male manosphere type of defense right or oh, why she didn't why didn't she file the complaint when it happened all that sort of nonsense but you haven't heard anybody in the industry actually try to um back up diddy's character right or basically say hey no he's not the guy that he's being portrayed to be no one really have any repute and these details the level of detail the dates included the people included it's making me believe that everything that cassie said was absolutely true it continues um but that calculus changed um last thursday when cassie whose real name is cassie ventura filed a bombshell lawsuit the singer da -da -da, I thought Cassie would ne would never come forward to talk about this. When she finally did yesterday, I was like, thank God. I'm so happy that she has the courage to do what she was doing. And I was more happy to come forward myself to describe the level of abuse that I saw was she was enduring. And this is what this is the benefit of people coming forward, even after the fact, even if it isn't a civil case, just to get some money. Because what it does is that it exposes people. And I think that's the major, most important part of this. Because the truth of it, the ugly truth of it, the ugly, ugly truth of it, is that people like Diddy don't go to prison. People of this type of level of wealth, he's the one, you know, he's one of what? Only f a handful of billionaires in hip hop, maybe a handful of, you know, black billionaires in the world, right? People like this don't go to prison. They don't go to jail. They won't face any real life consequences apart from reputational damage. But reputational damage is everything to these people because they spend a long time building their reputation. They spend a long time working, cultivating, doing deals, scamming, um, you know, stepping on people, whatever they do to, to make the reputation be what it is. So when somebody comes out with the allegation, even if it's one, even if it's two, it can undo a decade, two decades worth of work in an instant. So Cassie doing what she did, being brave and stepping up and talking about it and putting it on paper, putting it via the courts has done more damage to his legacy than probably anything before this than any innuendo than any rumor or whatever the fact that somebody close to him the fact that somebody that we all saw that was close to him throughout the years coming out and say what she said and then the res and then the what you call it the settlement happening soon after even though the lawyer is saying it's not an admission of guilt i'm sorry to us regular people it does look like an admission of guilt if you're innocent of the crimes that Diddy's been accused of as a man, I've said it plenty of times myself, if that ever was to occur to me, which it wouldn't because I'm not a fucking creep, right? I'm a lot of things, but I'm not a fucking creep and I'm not going to, you know, put myself on people when they don't want me to put on them. No way, Jose. But if an allegation like that was to ever come on my name, no pun intended, there is not a day that wouldn't go by where I'll not be defending myself. I would exhaust every single option to clear my name if I didn't do it. No matter what people said, I would ex I would exhaust every option. And then I know, fundamentally, I, know, I think all men know, even if you do clear your name, that smut of being accused of being a rapist and abuser can never really leave you anyway. That little bit of a smudge on your name can never leave you. It's kind of a lesson you have to kind of take. It's one of those harsh, harsh lessons in life you have to take, even if you, you're completely innocent and you have to kind of keep it moving. But... I will try my best to clear my name, regardless if I know some people won't believe me because, you know, when someone puts out the allegations, people immediately think, oh, because you've been accused, you must be guilty. I would not, not settle any way, shape or form. It doesn't matter what a lawyer said, what my counsel said, not happening. So the fact that Diddy did it, given his station, given his resources, given his clout, given his fame, tells me everything. It tells you everything that he will do at this time. It tells you absolutely everything. Honestly, it really does. It continues here. Um, I've always been traumatized myself about what I saw. To me, watching this was just cruel, so horrible. She was treated like a rat. It was literally like her voice was snatched and there was nothing she could do. That she was started standing up for herself. She was in trouble. She knew to keep quiet and go along with whatever she was, whatever he's saying. And that's something that you also have to kind of keep in mind. Again, this is all kind of revisionist history. But even looking back, being a bit of an R&B, um, you know, pop head myself, whatever it may be that she was the creator at that time, right? whatever that genre is, but I'm going to call it mostly R&B. If you think back to Cassie, she really was a bit of a an empty vessel, isn't it? She didn't really speak much, not many interviews. And she really didn't go out of her way to kind of express herself or really have a, her, have her voice heard in any way, shape or form. That maybe is an explanation as to why. Because of all the years of abuse and control, she was made to feel like she didn't really have a voice, you know? 
And that probably explains why she was so quiet and why she did, you know, take a bit of a back seat and let basically did he take all the shine or just was there to be a fucking glorified handbag of some regard, right? Or maybe a trophy wife in that regard. It's really interesting when you think about all these things, it's all like piece together her kind of personality and shit. Um, it continues. Uh the the Blah, blah, blah. he presented his vision for Cassie's breasts as she stood topless before them and had photos taken of her body it was him taking it was him talking about what he wanted to the surgeon by the way imagine how weird that is bro god almighty if you're a surgeon and you see a dude in your room or in your fucking you know consultation room telling you how he wants his wife's or the lady in question's breasts to look most likely you should probably put a call into somebody right because most likely there's some abuse or some level of manipulation and control, whether it's, you know, physical or psychological going on behind the scenes. If a guy comes into your fucking, you know, surgery place and is like, hey, I want my breast, I want my lady to look like this and shows you a picture of Nicki Minaj, like, there's some issues there. If the, Especially the woman's not talking and she's standing behind the dude the whole entire time. It's a bit odd. Looking down the floor, like twiddling her thumbs. Really strange. Um... She had a flat chest. He said he wanted a full shape, sexy, but not too big. Usually men act like I just want her to be happy, even though they know it's for them. Men are usually kind of quiet in these consultations. It was out of the ordinary that he was doing all of this talking and she wasn't saying anything. She appeared meek. She was more like a Stepford wife, agreeable and amiable, but quiet. God damn. Um, he just got into his artistry mode, the witness said, recalled the surgery, charged about 16 grand for the for the procedure. I bet you that's gone up now, isn't it? I bet you that's nowhere near the price of breast augmentation now. That was 16K in what? That was in 2006, they said, right? I bet you that is probably doubled by now uh, because everybody's getting work done. Because I remember back then, even women that did get, you know, I don't know, uh, that got fucking, you know, touch-ups and shit, right? They got stuff kind of pulled and tightened, whatever. It was such a big deal. Do you remember that, how big of a deal that was? When a woman got a fucking, her boobs done, the stories everywhere, front page news, everyone talking about it. It's like, Jesus Christ. And now people get their whole entire faces changed, bodies changed, and people don't really bat an eyelid, really. Um, it continues. He was describing how great the outcome is going to be, how confident he was about achieving the desired results. The surgery took place later in the week in another location with Cassie being released in the evening. But according to a source, Diddy was furious with the results. The very next day, he wanted to meet Dr. Ryan and discuss having a breast removed to be a smaller size. Dr. Ryan called the witness, expressing alarm and wanting her to be present for the meeting. He wanted me to be there. He needed some support. He um, thought that there would be a strength in numbers with me helping navigate through this. So most likely Diddy will know who this person is, isn't it? They're being anonymous on the paper, but most likely Diddy will know who that person is. You'll definitely remember. Um, this is a bit too bait, man. During this visit, Cassie quietly sobbed as Diddy railroaded the surgeon, as source says. It was the day after the surgery. She looked like she was in a lot of pain. The plastic surgeon tried to talk sense Diddy, she said. The doctor was shocked and seemed like he was going to piss his pants um like what am i doing with this the source said he was trying to hold his ground that he was never going to happen assuring him that we were that 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 what's that assuring him that we can get to that desired result but that we need some time for healing he was saying that he was he was saying there's a lot of swelling now but that is how it will go down he said you're seeing a lot of swelling and a lot of fluid but it will go down but then he wasn't convinced and kept saying no they've got to come out now Dr. Ryan succumbed to the pressure. Okay, I'll get them together. We'll take them out. Do a smaller size. Jesus Christ. He felt bad for her. It was sad. It was just sad. And while this was all going on, Cassie was not talking at all. She was crying, visibly traumatized, but she wasn't saying anything at all and just going along with whatever was said. She, was advocate she wasn't advocating for herself or for the boobs and Diddy was not comforting her at all. Privately, Dr. Ryan told me this was a um, mutilation that I can't even believe this, the witness said. He was saying, poor Cassie, this is awful. The source said the doctor rushed to get the supplies and team together and performed the follow-up surgery within a week. A witness said that he'd never see Diddy or Cassie again. She kept silent until now. Oh, fucking hell, bro. Absolutely crazy, bro. Absolutely crazy. I bet those plastic surgeons have seen some things, innit? And they have to really question their morality as well, their principles, if they're willing to do that, you know, for money and stuff. It's like, fucking hell, bro. You know, you are also aiding and abetting the mutilation, especially so soon after the job has been done, the first one. 
But I guess you have to pay for your family, innit? You gotta pay for your mortgages and put your kids through private school. So I guess nothing really matters. Fucking tragic, man. But yeah, strength and solidarity to Cassie. Um and yeah, guys in the fucking on the fucking dance floor need to keep their hands, eyes, and ears to themselves and just dance, have a good time, and not turn every fucking nightclub you know outing into an opportunity to go and bang and try and pull it's not that deep really go for the music dance have a good time and go home that really is should be the name of the game in my opinion but again what do i know